to their candy production. So they wanted to find the median of the productions where they would be equal to one another. So what they devised was to graph the system of equations. So when you guys have a problem like this, it's asking us to solve the system. And basically solving the system, you guys can see we have two equations. We're going to want to graph both equations. Now, one equation we have is in standard form. One equation we have is in slope-intercept form. I will graph the equation that's in slope-intercept form first, because I believe that is the one you guys are most familiar with in graphing. So just remember, guys, when graphing in slope-intercept form, the first thing you want to do is identify the y-axis, or I'm sorry, the y-intercept, which in this case is negative 1. So I go on my y-axis, I go down to negative 1, and I make a nice big dot. Then the next thing is to find another point I need to use the slope. And you can see I changed my slope as a whole number, and I rewrote it as 3 over 1. Therefore, I could represent it as rise over run to use my slope to find another point. Okay. So you can see that since that's a positive 3, the change in the y values is a positive 3. So from my y-intercept, I'll go up 3 units, 1, 2, 3. And then my change in my x values is positive 1. Jennifer, that's not really going to help you out when you're doing this. I'll go to the right one. Then I now have two points that create a line. So I will connect. And now I have graphed one line. The next line is a little bit more difficult. Um, just because it's not in that same format. So if you want to use the same format, you got to rewrite it in that format. And to do that, you got to solve for x. You could also use the intercept method, which is plugging 0 in for x, 0 in for y. But um, I know a lot of you guys are used to slope intercept. So let's solve for x. Oh, I'm sorry, solve for y. So I subtract an x on both sides, and I get y equals negative x plus 3. Does anybody have any questions on what I did there? Now, remember, that's negative x. That can be re -rep represented as negative 1x. And just like how I put a 1 under the 3, I can put a 1 under the negative 1. Right? So really, my slope, when it's negative x, really that slope is negative 1 over 1. So again, I identify my y-intercept, which is at positive 3. So I go on the y-axis up 3, 1, 2, 3. And then I follow the slope. Since the change in the y is negative, I'm going to go down 1. Change in the uh, x is positive, I go over 1. All right. Now, here's where a lot of students make the mistake. They graph it. Ladies and gentlemen, the question does not say graph two equations. It says solve the system. What we're trying to do is identify when is the system true for both equations. So you need to label the point, which is 1, 2. All right. Since there is an intersection, and there is a solution we call that consistent. And since they intersect only at one point, it's called independent. If they were parallel lines and they never intersected, Quijan, we call that inconsistent. And if they intersect, we know that's consistent. But if they're the intersect indefinitely, meaning they're the same line, we call those dependent. Yes. So when you have more than two lines, and they're basically asking the same thing, isn't that when you shade? If we are dealing with inequalities, then yes, we would be dealing with shading. But these are equations, so we're not doing the shading. But we will be doing that on the quiz as well, which I'll go over. Wait, is this review? Yes. Um, yes. We covered this weeks before break. 